we felt it mandatory at this juncture to call us here to exert the mandate you gave us and the confidence reposed on us to pilot the affairs of our dear council. You may wish to note that this meeting is the first of its kind in the history of the council. It is in line with the resolve of the present APC administration to bring about the well-desired change we propagated for and to protect our nascent democracy so that we can start to enjoy the dividends of democracy. At the end of the meeting, you shall be able to score us appropriately. In function of office, we inherited a dishonest system, huge debt, broken down electricity, dilapidated offices and furniture, rotting infrastructures, a forest like a sectarian, empty treasury, etc. Besides, staffers were old moons of unpaid salaries and nine moons areas of data control staff. Mr. Minister, sir, at this point, we are squarely telling you that when we assumed office, the first two moons and the first and second statutory allocation we received from the Federation account went into paying debts. And this debt we talk about, we are not debt accruing from either staff areas or claim by staff or contract areas or whatever. This debt were right in the bank. And of course, we have to settle the bank with the first two months statutory allocation we received, leaving us with certainly nothing to start with. We were virtually confused and downfunded. We also inherited a breakdown of law and order in land allocations and disputes in the traditional institutions. It is so sad to mention that we made an unworkable system of administration where the quest to get rich was alarming. We started by making the surroundings of the Secretariat habitable by felling the trees and clearing the grasses. I remember instructing the then treasurer and the Nolge president not to consider paying my salaries or allowances until the generating set or the generator set in the council was repaired and the debt we are owing AEDC is restored, paid, and it was sold. And I know very well that the staff of Warrior Council will be able to witness. Before then, the first two months federation allocation for the council, like I've said, was impounded by the bank to recoup the debt owed by the council. It is worthy of note that in spite of the inherited situation with God on our side, we have been able to make some headway. Agriculture and natural development. You may recall that one of the cardinal focuses of the APC administration is agriculture. As the food basket of the NCT, the council is blessed with fertile land spread across the ten worlds with hard-working farmers. In the year under review, as a way of boosting sufficient crop and food production, as well as diversifying the economy, we purchase fertilizers and agrochemical for the rural farmers, ranging from NPK, urea, and grammar we are procured and dispensed with farmers at the 50% subsidy. Also, procured assorted farm inputs such as herbicides, insecticides, and snap sprayers, and distributed free of charge to farmers so as to enhance productivities. I speak with you by the grace of God under our struggle to make sure that farmers get a relief. We were able to recover some amount of money that we owe the council through uh, the provision of tractors that were made for this council. And with this money, as I speak with you, Honorable Minister, these two abandoned tractors that have been there for the past four or five years are now undergoing repairs. So that in the near or in the very close days by, our farmers can have tractors back on their farms. Education and social development. As a citadel of learning in FCT, the council is placed in a vintage to accommodate the underlisted. The headquarters of the Nigerian Law School is here. The headquarters of the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board is here. The Veritas University is here. Public Service Institute is here. Federal Government College, Girls College is here. Administrative Staff College of Nigeria is here. Special Center for the National Upper University we have here. 
Department of State Security Senior Staff Training School is located here. The National Defense College Camp is also located here. Public and private institution of learning too are numerous to mention. Honorable Minister here, yeah, I will be appealing, and I believe that by the grace of God, you will assist the very good people of Barira Council to every politician, every rumor is as important as every journey information is. We have been hearing that the Nigerian Law School will be moving down to the city centre. I think there is no need to continue to congest the city centre. We should decongest the city centre for security purposes. We have also heard that the headquarters of the Joint Admission and Education Board will be moving to the headquarters down there at the city centre. What form of development shall we be giving to ourselves if everything are centered at the center? Mr. Minister, it is one of our things that we are seeing the very good people of Guayra Council are very, very hospitable to see that these institutions are allowed to exist in Guayra Council. This department has eight functional units. I'm very happy to note that we have recorded tremendous success in each of the units. Community development units it's a unit of ed in the education department here in Guarira Council. As I earlier highlighted, the rehabilitation of the rural roads was jointly supervised by this unit in conjunction with the Works Department and Procurement and Planning Committee. The council also under this unit assisted a COP member who built a clinic in Guto as he passed his, uh, her personal development service with a sum of 500,000. Even at this point that we have known, we've been able to assist our COPAS to provide for us development, uh, community development services. Area Council Community Development Committee has been set up and inaugurated and World Committee will soon be inaugurated. I am the chairman of the Community Development Committee at the local government level. And the target is to see how we can advise and also improve and encourage our members at our community levels to begin to embrace self service delivery. Education unit. Within the year under review, the council through this unit partnered with an NGO from Taiwan to build a block of 12 classrooms right now going on in Tundam Kwaso. Honorable Minister, sir. During our electionary campaign, we did say where we cannot, we will go for partners of our interest to see how we can bring down development to our council. Also, the LEA Primary School Kogo was successfully phased. We had an MOU with a number of better information to enable us to have that school phased, and so it is today. We printed and distributed 60,000 exercise books of different leads to both public and private schools in the area council. It is pertinent to state that on assumption, we set up a committee to verify both teachers and number of existing LEA primary schools, and very soon, the report will be released. Honorable Minister, sir, it is unfortunate that on the handing over note I have, the issue of any year is not stated. And what we did was to begin to find out what is wrong. What it is said, he who pays the piper is the two. We are all aware that 95% of our statutory allocation as I quote from the Federal Federation account goes to the LEA deducted directly from the source. Yet, there was no record in Barrera Council to show the activities of any year. And it is on this road that we choose to verify the activities of the early year. And of course, by the grace of God, we were able to acquire about 1.3 hectares of land which has been earmarked for building of a senior secondary school which has been approved by Senior Secondary School Board of the FCT. It is under this administration and our struggle to see that in Shafa, we have a senior secondary school, and that has been approved, and the land is available, 1.3 hectare. Sport unit. The role of sport in the physical and physiological uh, well-being in a man cannot be overemphasized. Within this one year in office, the sport unit participated in FCT Area Council sport competition and clinched the bronze, the bronze medal for the council. I think to be one among three is wonderful. 
The council, through this unit, has been participating in the FCT monthly mass jogging and working exercise. Of course, Mr. Minister knows. This May edition of the exercise has been my, simple, my humble self as the chief jogger of the moon. As I speak, arrangement has been concluded to kick off the 2017 edition of the Chairmanship Cup competition by next week. And you are all invited. The whole idea is to discover talent and keep youth out of the streets. Social Welfare Unit. Within the period under review, this unit registered almost 32 social clubs and associations, rehabilitated several abandoned babies before taking them to the Social Welfare Center of the FCC. You may recall that my wife, in conjunction with the unit, distributed bags of rice, maize, gallons of vegetable oil, and other food items to about 100 widows cut across the 10 political world during the Easter period to help pushing the effect of this research. <laughs> culture and tourism. Bwari Area Council is the boiling pot of culture. The Ushapa Poetry Center especially has attracted several personalities. Prominent among them was President Bill Clinton, Vice President Dankwell, and Condoleezza Rice, a one-time Secretary of State of the United States of America. Within the year under review, the council through the unit carry out an intensive elimination of hotels and financial institutions within the area council for revenue purposes. The council through the unit is collaborating with the theater arts department of the University of Abuja students on an exchange program. Recently, we had a handful of the students which were come by the council to learn the culture of your original aborigines. In order to boost the tourism potentials the council has in its 2017 budget, a provision to revamp the poetry center which has received less attention from past administration. Honorable Minister, that it is wonderful to have that center, and very soon we shall be telling you that yes, we have the capacity to explore tourism. The council, through this unit, is discussing with, the, with interested partners to develop a befitting path and a recreation center on PPP arrangement to complement the existing poetry center and other historic sites. Library unit, as the saying goes, readers are leaders. It may interest you to know that the council has a library that was not put into use. On assumption of office, we decided to make the library a unit to enhance full utilization of the facility. With the equipment installed by the Nigerian Telecommunication Development Agency, plans are on the way to link the council to the web so that the populace can view our achievements and challenges. Marriage registry. This unit is bestowed with the right to conduct marriages. I know my brother will not be happy, the Amal chairman. Because of the importance of this service it renders, the council has considered it necessary to build an annex office in Cuba to complement the Buari office, and very soon, the council shall have a befitting marriage registry. So far, the registry has registered a reasonable number of marriages within the period of that review. Information and culture. This is the image-making unit of the council, otherwise known as the public relations unit. The unit is saddled with the responsibility of laundering the image of the council and its relationship with the media and the general public it cannot be overemphasized. Interestingly, the council has a cordial relationship with both the electronic and print media. On assumption of office, we discovered that the unit was on, that was kept aloof without any working gadgets. Hence, any time we had the need for coverages, we had to go hiring. And that was disturbing. We sat and weighed the pros and cons between hiring and outright purchase of this equipment. As I speak, we have purchased our own video and still cameras and mobile public address system. Honorable Minister, it is unfortunate that what I discovered was for the past 10 years or thereabouts, this council had no still camera not video camera. Very disturbing. And you can see the positive change the APC has brought to Barilla House. I have so directed that the boards attached to the unit be assessed and repaired to ease their mobility and promptness to venues of programs. Environmental Department. Honorable Minister, sir. This is one area you would prefer that all area council chairmen abandon every other activity and face. Cleanliness, they say, is next to godliness. This department is saddled with the utmost responsibility of keeping the council clean. 
on assumption, my team and uh, my team and I took some days to tour the ten political walls. We discovered the challenges building the council is the indiscriminate dumping of refuse and creation of illegal mountains of refuse around residential areas. With joy in my heart and credit to the Honorable Minister, our amiable Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Region, I want to authoritatively congratulate us on the final demolition of a great refuse mountain that has been harassing the council and the inhabitants of Lagos Street in 2 1 Uba. If the people of Usuma Ward are here, we we'll give testimony. Honorable Minister, under your directive, under your approval, with the supervision of Satellite and Development Department in conjunction with Barira Council, we commenced the evacuation of that refuse on the 28th of March and finished on the 29th of April. One good wound. All right. From the information we got, that mountain of refuse has sufficed for more than six years. But in less than one year in office, the council, in conjunction with satellite and development agency, succeeded in turning the mountain to a playing ground. And during our last visit to the site, in ecstasy, I have named that site Mala Muhammadu Musa Bello Majikadi. <laughs> Hence, we have planned to bring that site. There is a similar gory site of that magnitude in Kubwa village pipeline. An expressway, but as I speak, the refuse mountain will also be evacuated soon, as the Honorable Minister has already granted approval through the Satellite and Development Department. We shall not salute you enough, but certainly you know that we are grateful to you, Mr. Minister. I have directed that the dumping site at Barangoni be treated and maintained regularly, and it is so since my assumption. We have also commenced door to door collection through the PPP arrangement. I want to appeal to residents of Guarira Council to cooperate with us and, of course, our partners to see that this waste are collected from house to house directly to the dump site, not even the collection points. Because at the collection points, the controls are much more difficult. But if we can get this waste down to the dump site, certainly our bulldozer will be working per second, not per minute. We are committed to doing that so that we can have a cleaner environment. Health and social services. Health is wealth, and the healthy people are wealthy people. It is the ultimate aim of this administration to see that every citizen of Guarira Council lives a healthy life. Consequently, upon this before my assumption of office, in like a desical attitude to the monthly routine house to house immunization and administration of polio vaccines and other relevant vaccines in Guarira Council was appealing as touches, was schools which are the targeted populace often shown this administration of the vaccines. We took it upon ourselves, of course leadership by example. I joined the train, I made sure those schools that reject, the churches and mosques that reject, I go there myself. And God willing, we are achieving results. To sensitize people of the importance of these vaccines, today we are bold to say, that vaccines are no longer enough to go around. Shortly after our assumption, cases of several spinal meningitis were suspected and reported in some quarters of the area council, but our prompt response quelled the situation. Vaccines were acquired and administered in the 10 political ward of the council. In order to alleviate the high cost of medical expenses, the area council flagged up the community-based health insurance scheme in Kogo Primary Healthcare, with a total of 163 registered participants and was supported by the Center for Health Education, Economic Rehabilitation, and Social Security. Cheers. The Council's cordial relationship with NGOs brought about a citizen health education and development initiative to the Council and constructed a wonderful health center at Sherry Koro. The High Commissioner will bear us witness that that health center is well. Recently, the Council, in consultation with the Sultan Foundation, donated some packet of Mesoprostol tablets for the management of the third stage labor control of bleeding after labor, which has been the major cause of high rate of child and maternal mortality for distribution to the 10 world of the cancer. This aspect, we were so fortunate to have had this foundation, which lectured particularly our traditional rulers on how to attend to cases like this. Sometimes you don't need a doctor. If you have ideas on how to manage some crisis, 
You could do that before doctor arrives. Gentlemen of the press, distinguished guests, time will fail me to begin to bother you with the rhetoric of medical jargons, but I will not fail to tell you that our administration remains resolute at making Guarira Council better than we met it. We are not going to rest in our horses until the council becomes an element of emulation. Within the period under review, we have the meager, uh, with the meager resources available to us, achieved the following. 20 health personnel underwent a five days intensive training on the infant and youth, young child feeding, sponsored by the Society for Community Development in collaboration with the council and feed the future in all the political worlds. Infant and young child feeding support groups were formed and of course, if you have these, you will see them as they are lined up there because of time. The council achieved coverage of so many other activities that have to do with health personnel will know this better. Because of time and just jumping that area side, you could, uh, you could go ahead to achieve some of the feats. Today is Saturday and some of us will have to attend weddings. Plans are underway to equip our 47 primary health care centers with both staff and equipment for effective service delivery. If we went down, blow out, I mean, if we don't blow out our trumpets, nobody will do it for us. We deserve a part of our bag. Works department, in line with the policy of that APC administration, we sent us on prudency, conservation of funds, and proper utilization of available resources. My team and I set up a committee on procurement and planning to plan the development of council to propel our national democracy. Within the year under review, the council was able to achieve the following through procurement monitoring committees supervised by the works department. Construction of 0.7.0 meter length and 0.6 meter diameter concrete ring culvert in Tuduwada along market by police barrack in Bwari. Retrofilling and reactivation of motorized borehole at the council secretariat. What a shame. At the point we have no water at the secretariat when we arrive. These two boreholes, above overhead tank, we are abandoned for over four or five years. As I speak with you, we have put them to use. So that our staff will no longer go out to either public houses or public areas to use themselves. Rehabilitation of 8.5 kilometer access road at Ibu Junction to Shere, I mean to Pico. There's a community called Pico. There's a community called Shere. Honorable Minister, I think it will be good to visit these areas shortly so that you see for yourself how they are faring. Rehabilitation of 6.5 kilometer road from Galibi 1 to Galibi 2 down to Sumpe. Rehabilitation of Ibu Kaima Toklo Road also has been completed. Grading of 5.0 kilometer as access rural road in Pape down to Shishipe River and from Shishipe River down to Nubuchi and from that same river down to Shishipe One. We have communities over this area and I'm very convinced that at the end of this uh, meeting, the Honorable Minister will want to know these villages. And of course, there is a popular road called Ajogule area one in Pape. In the last 10 years, government presence has not passed through there. But within this one year of APC-led administration, they are saying to go to the glory. <laughs> Maintenance and construction of steel tank for the 200 kVA power generator set in the council secretariat that was abandoned for close to a decade. I'm happy that the I mean, former chairman of Guarira Council is here. He knows better about this generator site, as we said, and I'm happy that he is APC-led as well as stakeholder. At a point we had no light. Today, if Nepal goes off, we own this generator. And we want to assure you that it is only and has been able to be done only under the APC led administration. We have been able to repair about five number of vehicles that we are completely abandoned. In fact, at the point they were like scraps. Today, as I speak with you, the five vehicles are on the road. The area we are in now is not the West Public Fund. Taxpayers' money was put to use for their own benefit. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on assumption of duty, we discovered that the council has the capacity to be self-sufficient. 
There were markets and other revenue generating ventures, but none of these potentials were properly managed. As I speak, the council has the following ongoing market construction projects under PPP agreement or arrangement. This includes construction of Kukwaba Motor Park so market in Kubwa, it is 20% uh, completion as of now. Our intention here, Honorable Minister, sir, your brother that traveled to Adama goes to only Utaku, my brother from Adama, it is well, goes only to Utaku to board their buses down to either Adamawa or to Yola or to Kano or to Lagos. We are saying, my chairman, Amak, you can leave the city center and come and board your vehicle from Kubwa and go to Kano. Utako is congested. Construction of Mpape 2 market, of course, it is at 20% uh, completion level. Construction of Metama village market, Kubwa, is at 35% completion level. Kukwaba and Metama, the foundation was laid in November last year. And as I speak with you by the grace of God, we shall be commissioning this market by November, God willing. This market in Maitama has the capacity to surpass what you have in Musa Market. If I'm looking at the structure right now, I know very well that Rama Chairman is already shivering, but it is well. Because all these gold and silver that are sold in Musa Market shall return to Barrera Council. Construction of Dawaki Electronics and Communication Market, Dawaki do say axis, 55% completion, it is roof, so beautiful. Opposite uh, the popular Charlie Boy uh, bus stop. I think I saw her daughter this morning. Charlie Boy's daughter is supposed to be here. So what we're trying to tell Amak is that Charlie Boy does not reside only in Amak. He resides also in Barrera Council. And certainly, very soon, he will no longer go to your markets. Thank you for being a friend. Construction of Shagari market day day is at 15% completion. Honorable Minister, sir, my report is before your office. This area has boundary adjustment issue. Long ago, if I right now as we speak with you, the access road to this market is tampered with by Tafa local government. It's a community where we have not less than six to seven traditional rulers from Barriera Council. The area is under the control of the area commander, Kubwa. But you imagine Tafa local government coming right in there and making layout and allocating plot of land, causing crisis. But to God be the glory, with his wisdom, we've been able to manage our people, advise them, not to allow chaos, not to allow breakdown of law and order. But Honorable Minister, it is actually a disturbing issue. And I wish, I pray, that you have to do something so that peace will continue to be sustained in that environment. Internal generated revenue, IGR. When we came into office, we met a dilapidated revenue system and account. A system where monies are paid into the account, of, account by 9 a.m. and withdraw by 9.30 a.m. A system where some revenue collector has two receipt booklets, one for the council and the other for themselves, for their personal gains. A system where technical advisors are being used, yet not under the control of the council. Honorable member representing Abuja South will bear the witness that in one of our appearances at the National Assembly, a developer came to say he is in charge of revenue generation in Waira Council, yet he never knew who was the chairman. A revenue collector. He never knew who was the city. He never knew who was the head of admin. Yet he has the consent of the council to collect revenue. These monies were not dropping the account of Barrera Council. It is so pathetic. At a close study of the ugly situation, we started by reshuffling the unit, then set up a committee of market auditors to look into the books of the unit and came up with a blueprint. As I speak, we have reorganized the system and, re and right now revenue are now being gotten and accounted for. We have also approved production of security receipts as part of council control measure. I made a monthly revenue generation of 2 million naira, highest 4 million naira. 
in the account of our council as at the time we arrived. But as I speak with you today, the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees Chairman of the Warrior Council will testify that change positively has occurred. <laughs> For the very first time in 20 years of the council existence, a bylaw has been enacted to empower the council to collect revenue in areas tax restricted. The bylaw is undergoing the process of gazetting and have since the passage of the bylaw been receiving members of different professions and individuals commending and appreciating the council effort. Honorable Minister, the APC Legal Administration is bent on making sure that law and order are maintained. Everything that certainly will be done in this country should be done under the ambit of the law. For 20 years that Gwari has existed, we have not witnessed what a bylaw is. As I speak with you, I signed into, by, uh, into, into law the Warrior Council bylaw on the 29th of December 2016. I think an applause to my legislative house in Warrior Council. The speaker and his team have been very, very wonderful. And very soon, as we complete the Gazette system, members of the public shall have these copies to guide them and guide us also to avoid multiple taxations. Traditional institutions, the council is blessed with two graded chiefs second class and third class status. I think, Honorable Minister, it is time you consider this wonderful area council with a first class status. <laughs> we have 16 district heads, about 100 village and hamlet heads. As the constituent of cult our culture, we are seriously working at improving on their well-being. To this end, approval has been granted for 100% increase of their salaries. Honorable Minister, sir, I will pause here to tell you why. In one of my appearances last year before the National Assembly, Bahiria Council paid the least amount to their to, to, to traditional owners. And I felt bad. The challenge was so high. The challenge was so high. And we have to do something. With the meager resources we have, we know we can contain the situation. I am pleased to also inform you that the palaces of Metama and Kukwaba where PPP market are being constructed have been completed, while that of Maitama is set to be commissioned after this meeting. <laughs> Those of Kukwaba and Shagari are still ongoing. We inherited a serious dispute or dispute that lingered for several years in Duse Axis, but to God be the glory, that tussle has been resolved. Honorable Minister, I remember in the last Jack meeting, the six area council chairman were tasked to make sure that peace reigns within our domains. When we arrive at this council, we receive several security reports, particularly from the DSS, on issues concerning traditional institutions in Barrera Council and other community issues. As I speak with him, the case of Jigakuchi Kubabo community. Uh, land issue that pertains their farm land that have been there for four or five years. God willing, it has been resolved, and that report is communicated to your office. The Duse Sagbaji and Duse Bauma chief transit dispute that have lasted for about a decade. By the grace of God, we have resolved and peace has returned to this community. As I speak with you also, Kuchi Bui case that was lying. And due to the fake cases that we are lying, by the grace of God, we have resolved them peacefully. I think if there is any traditional institution that or area that is suffering now, is the Kubwa Axis. The Honorable Minister, you know very well that that case is being handled by your office. Hence, you have set up a ministerial committee. So we want to assure you that peace within our domain is certain. So have improved on the council security arrangement to protect our facilities across the 10 worlds. Regular meetings are held with relevant security agencies. The council is collaborating with the FCT in collaboration with the FCT Commissioner of Police recently conducted special patrol around Kaushere Igwazis to rid of some bad elements in the area. The successful operation was coordinated by the Kuba area commander through the divisions in, the, in his command. Interestingly, we have approved repairs of five number security vehicles to enhance their patrol. However, I must state here that we are partially under attack.
there is a forest around Tau Aziz. Uh, uh, and one in uh, Napo Axis. These forests are suspected to be harboring very wonderful criminals, terrible criminals, that are well equipped with sophisticated weapons. The Fulanese and other tribes of these Axis don't see their two eyes closed. Bahia Council borders three states, Niger State, Nasrawa State, and Kaduna State. Particularly, in between Nasrawa and Niger, the Kaduna has this. It is terrible. Honorable Minister, we are appealing, like I've always appealed during the Security Council meeting of the FCT, that we need a police division in this access. Because the outpost, the police division in Bahia Council is overstretched. And if possible, it would be bad if we have a mobile unit within this access because of border control. <laughs> legislative arm. There is cordial working relationship between the legislature and the executive. For the very first time since the inception of the council, our budget was passed in good time and signed publicly into law by the executive chairman. The councillors will bear us witness that we did prepare our budget presented it to them for deliberation, which they did, just like we witnessed at the National Assembly, distinguished senator, both serving and past. The beer was witnessed that it would be a good, good practice if our people will undergo this process at local level before getting to their own uh, standard. One of cardinal achievements of the institution is the enacting of formidable bylaw for the council. In a bid to serve the people better and having a full knowledge of what the mining act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria stipulates, the legislators has embarked on a study of the memorandum of understanding entered between the quarry company and their host communities, which they requested for and received from the two parties. Honorable Minister, sir, we know very well that you are in charge of the mining uh, quarry site and other construction activities, but the fact remains that. 75% of these activities take place in Guarina Council. Yet, we have no control. We have decided that we must have control because we are a government. And right now, our legislators are looking into the books of these people to be sure that the licenses they are carrying are actually licenses that you have provided for them. And if we discover anomalies, we shall be reporting to you. We we'll seek for your kind permission and understanding to note that as a government, we need to do our part. We are not trying to cross boundaries. Boundary, sorry. The exercise embarked upon by the legislature is to ensure that the electorates in their various worlds are not cheated, but to benefit from the corporate social responsibility of the mining companies cited in the various communities in Bwariria Council. Challenges. Of course, in human life, if there are no challenges, certainly the activities of human are not completed. Having enumerated our scorecard and highlighted our achievement in the 365 days in office, gentlemen of the press, stakeholders, parties to our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I must confess that all these achievements are not without some challenges. The accrued monthly statutory allocation of the council is not enough, like Avalia said, as 95% of the money is deducted from the source for payment of LEA, both teaching and non-teaching staff. Honorable Minister, sir, permit me. I am not reporting the NUT Bwari branch. But I must say, join me in appealing today. I have been issued a 21 days ultimatum. It's either I act or they go on strike for a cause that was not committed by me, but a broken down system. In my handing over note, I have no issues of any at all. And I saw it worrisome, and I decided that under this change mantra, we must see changes coming. I set up a committee to verify the LEA. The first committee has concluded, and I set up a mini committee to reanalyze the report that has come to me to see what we can do. Because from what we have got, which is not verified, we have an area of two, over 203 million 
to be paid really as a result of non-implementation of their increments and promotions. And they have come to say, Chairman, it's either you pay or we go on strike. And I said, I have an action which will allow me pay or you go on strike. And that action is allow this committee do their verification proper, give me a report. If I will not be able to tackle it, I will forward it to the Minister Minister for assistance. And I'm appealing to them to allow me this opportunity of making sure that I finish this verification before I will commit anything at all for their cause. Yet, we are still at the battleground. Honorable right, Minister, it will be kind of you if you come to our airport, we will not want to see our children out of school. Our utmost challenge and constraint now, right now is nothing but finance. No wonder the Bible says money answered all things. If we had all the monies and the zeal with which we gave, we would have done more than this. Gentlemen of the press, the world is a global village. Anyone can sub into the net and see how much comes to the council monthly as subventions of the federation account at this time. Since our assumption of royalty, Bwari received the least allocation. I think I must commend my brother for once. He got minus three. So I think that was just the only time he defeated me in 12 minutes. But the rest of the Bwari has received the least allocation. We all know it at the point Bwari got 13 million. At the point Bwari got 24 million. The situation where you have a salary of over 100 and something million. How do you go? But that is not an excuse. The APC led government in Buhari Council is committed to bringing about positive change. God will help us. <laughs> our inability to pay our staff salaries as when due is not an act of malachy or prejudicial in any sort. Like I have mentioned earlier, on assumption of office, we are confronted with huge debts. Some we have fled, while others are being paid gradually or instrumentally. Our administration will not which haunt or ridicule anybody. But remember the Bible says, the soul that sins shall die. Because the fathers cannot eat soul graves and the children to get rotten. We have set up a committee, including committee on assets and liabilities, and I believe they will carry out their assignment within the ambit of the law. While we wish to achieve more before the expiration of our tenure, we want to implore all our sundry to pray for us as we work assiduously to protect our nascent democracy. Honorable Minister, I do not know which way you gave me, either through the INEC office or through the ESU and Sergium Bwari palaces. If you did through the Sergium Bwari palace and ESU uh, palaces, you will bear us witness that the face of Bwari is changing. This road has been there for quite a number of years. I think the last time it was widely and better touch was during one of our elder brothers. I don't want to mention his name when he was chairman. Okay. He had bulldozer why I have Peloda. <laughs> so you will see that despite the bigger resources we have, this road has been touched today as I speak with you. If you go there, you will see what all progress is seen and touched in Bwari Council. The road is a dual carriage, Honorable Minister, sir. You know the pressure I am mounting on you about this road. Please, wipe the tears of my people. Thank you for listening. God bless you.